got to take big chances in order for the potential for a big positive outcome. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Damn, I'm good. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Yes, I am back. I am not dead. <laughs> That's probably what you've been thinking, but uh, let, let's just say life has really got on top of me at the moment and I have been absolutely snowed under with 100 million problems, uh, almost as bad as Elon Musk, which is the subject of today's video. Um, as you know, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. It is an incredibly interesting time to be alive. Uh, I wake up every day with a smile on my face because someone's problems are worse than mine, if that is possible. But, um, yeah, so let's talk about the Twitter distraction. As you know, Elon Musk operates uh, many companies. Uh, his latest and possibly... Uh, most controversial company is Twitter and it is certainly eating up an absolute mountain of time uh, and energy and causing all sorts of uh, stress and anxiety for Mr. Musk and um, I can really kind of uh, relate to that. So let's talk about this because ultimately this may very well affect the Boeing company and as this is a Boeing company channel, let's talk about it. So, what is the Twitter hangover? I, I, that's how I perceive this. It is a hangover from doing something amazing, going out with your friends, having a, having a good drink and uh, a good song and dance, and then the next day you wake up, and despite having all those great memories, you have a massive hangover. And this is essentially what's happened with Twitter. You, you know, he, he's got his hands on something incredibly valuable, incredibly fun and useful, and with massive potential. Um, but there is a hangover there, and it's going to last a long time. It might be one of those two-day hangovers, if you've ever had one of them. And, uh, yeah, it's going to blow him out. So, in all honesty, um, I wasn't too sure about making this video, but I think there will be a small impact on the Boeing company. But it will be a lot less than all the other companies that uh, Elon Musk is operating. And I'll explain why. So, let's get into this Um there's no real reason for me to sugarcoat this, but uh, Twitter is in financial turmoil. It has always been an absolute uh, garbage company in terms of how it was operated and how it was, it was managed. It's an absolute dumpster fire. And I don't use that term very often, but it really is a dumpster fire. There are a lot of big, big problems with Twitter. Massive problems. Uh, and, and the main one is its financial state. It's losing $4 million per day. Um... And it, and it needs to stop. And this has been caused by terrible management. Um, they should have got on top of this four years ago. Uh, really kind of uh, made this a, a lean, mean machine, as it were. Um, and unfortunately, we're in a bad time. There's a big recession. Uh, or, in fact, I'd say we're in a recession and it's going to be a big recession. And this is going to absolutely KO a lot of uh, companies, big, small, medium-sized companies. And, and Twitter's not immune to this. Twitter could go bankrupt if they don't get uh, you know on top of this um twitter is completely dependent on advertising re revenue it, it's absolutely bananas yeah uh, imagine basing your entire business model on on one form of uh, revenue <laughs> and and then being so kind of exposed to those people that, that they can essentially manipulate you and that needs to change and that can't change overnight and it, it requires a lot of effort on elon musk's behalf and his team um there's, there's also not very much talent at Twitter. Really isn't great talent at Twitter. What was there over the last five or six years is left. Um, and, and what you're left with, essentially, is just a bunch of woke parasites. You know, they, they take massive wages. They contribute absolutely almost nothing to the company. Uh, and they make it worse. Uh, and they push and get in the wrong direction. And thankfully, Elon Musk has managed to get rid of a lot of this dead wood. There's still a lot to go. I think he should be cutting another 10 to 15% of the workforce. But but hey, let, let's see what happens. Um, and, and the current business plan is obsolete junk. I mean, there's, there really was a very, very poor business plan that's been in place. And it's not really done too much. So all these things need to be resolved. It's going to eat up Elon Musk's time. 
there's no real time now for Elon Musk to go to the Boeing company and, and push big ideas. Um, even though he's, he's given very little of his time now, this is, well, in, in the previous years, he's given very little of his time to the Boeing company because he's been involved in other things. He's still been able to give that time um, and contribute to the company's success. But, but now, um, he's totally, totally snowed under. These things need resolving immediately. He can't wait, you know, until next month to resolve them. Every single aspect here needs to be, you know, his immediate attention and resolved. And ultimately, if Elon's mind is on Twitter and uh, Tesla and SpaceX, he can't turn on his creative kind of engineering uh, brain onto the Boeing company because ultimately the Boeing company is going to have a very big year next year. There's a lot of projects that are going to be starting, uh, potentially new ones that, that, that you know get accepted as well uh, or approved, um, specifically in, in Nevada, Florida, Texas. All these things need his attention. Um, although I'll explain to you why I'm, I'm quite rosy about how this all turns out in a moment. But there's a lot of things going on here. It's a big hangover. Uh, Elon Musk is going to be out of the building for the foreseeable future although at least the rest of this year. Um, so in my own opinion, I think there will be a very, very short term impact on the Boeing company, but it will be quite a, a small impact in that there are people who operate at the Boeing company who can, who can essentially take on uh, the, the necessary workload uh, to, to make sure this company continues to progress. Um, most importantly, we have the big man, Steve Davis. He's there to hold the fort. I've always been um, a keen fan and supporter of Steve. I think that so far he's done a pretty decent job considering the limited resources that uh, he's he's had to, to begin with. Obviously, things are improving greatly now. The size of the workforce is going up. You know, they've, they've got the uh, research and test site at... Uh, uh, Vastrop there, Texas, um, there's, there's a lot of things going on, Pflugerville as well, uh, Adelanto test, test site, you, you know, he, he's really managed to push the company forward, the technology seems to be coming coming on quite nicely, um, and most importantly, projects have been pushed beyond the, the tendering uh, phase, and actually, um, they're, they're coming up to three projects now that they've completed in, in Las Vegas, and... Um, hopefully many to come in many other states. So I'm fairly confident that Steve Davis can take the slack. Um, there's a lot of things that have been done this year already that he can focus on, and it doesn't really require Elon Musk that much. Um, I hold Steve Davis in as high a regard uh, as Gwen uh, Shotwell at SpaceX. I think potentially he could uh, be just as influential as, as Gwen. Uh, I'll go in, <laughs> however you pronounce it, uh, at SpaceX. But I'm pretty confident that, that he will hold the fort down, as it were, and, and push forward, make things uh, right. Um, I, I don't see Elon Musk being required, really, that much this year. He obviously will want to you know, get involved because it is his company. Um, but um, he can rest easily, knowing that, that Steve's got a handle on things. Projects that are, you know, set to start construction will actually go to construction phase on time. And um, I'm pretty confident that uh, Proofwalk, the development of Proofwalk, will continue in, in good stead. So all in all, it's going to have lesser an impact on the Boeing company than other companies such as SpaceX. I think that what's happening with Twitter will have uh, potentially uh, a three-month delay on some of the things that SpaceX are doing, potentially. Um, Tesla, on the other hand, has really excellent management and a very, very large workforce. And a lot of the, the kind of core products at Tesla have already been kind of uh, pushed beyond um, just kind of the feasibility stage into like, you know, design and, and manufacturing. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Very, very interesting. But I'm fairly confident the Boeing company will, will go through this and things will return back to normal. Um, halfway through next year, I'd imagine 2023. Uh, so, so yeah, Steve Davis. You know, we're glad that he's got his hands on the ball and he's going to run with it. And I'm pretty confident that you know, get over the try line. Um, 
this is kind of something that I, I thought would be useful to, to kind of illustrate what, what's, what's been the previous conditions and, and what are, you know, the future conditions. So this is currently how Elon splits his time, in my opinion, on what he has said. Now, I, I remember he said he, he, he spends less than 1% of his time with the Boeing company. However, because the Boeing company has expanded and there's there's more people working there and there's more projects uh, on the drawing board, as it were, and, and actually in the uh, design and construction phase, um, I think he's become slightly more involved with the Boeing company. So if you look at this from uh, his time perspective in Q3 of this year, he's been spending about 1.8% of his time with the Boeing company. Neuralink, around about the same. I, I think that he's a bit more heavily involved in Neuralink because it is a bit more of a, a, a difficult uh, project um, involving some very you know specialised disciplines. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that he spends slightly more time with them. However, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty confident this is accurate. Uh, most of his time he spent at SpaceX than Tesla, uh, even though SpaceX has got its, its own kind of CEO, um, they ultimately have harder problems to solve and it, this is where Elon seems to spend more of his time, but it's it's fairly 50-50 between Tesla and, and SpaceX. This is what has happened in Q4. Now, this is what I think will happen over the course of Q4. If I was to do this for say last week, um, Twitter would probably be 60, maybe even 70% of Elon's time. However, I expect that over time, this will equalize and it'll be somewhere like 37%. So Elon Musk is currently sleeping about three to four hours per day, I reckon, possibly even less than that. And he's having to split all his time between these five companies. Um, I'm guessing the Boeing company has fallen considerably to around 1%, if not zero who knows? It depends how much uh, confidence he has that, that, that he doesn't need to really help Steve Davis. I, I think Steve Davis is kind of managing, you know, pretty much 99% of the things that happen at the Boeing company, making a lot of the very, very big decisions. So it's not necessary for Elon Musk, although Elon Musk wants to get involved. So ultimately, he's going to give some of his time over to the Boeing company. Same goes with Neuralink. But uh, Tesla, SpaceX and Twitter are all kind of splitting. Um, you know, 95%, 96% of his time, uh, kind of equally, more so to Twitter. There's a lot of problems to fix it to um, Ultimately, if something major goes wrong at the Boeing company, maybe he will have to take some of that time away uh, from Tesla or SpaceX and, and put it to the Boeing company, but uh, I don't anticipate anything major going wrong, and I, I just expect things to continue as per usual. Uh, but this is a good illustration of how Elon Musk spends his time. This this is not good for e, for Elon Musk because there's only so much um, stress you can put your mind through over long periods of time. So this might be sustainable now, but in a couple of months' time, that you know he's not going to be able to function as well. And really, really, there needs to be a proper CEO at Tesla. Who can take over the reins and the same goes for twitter um i'm not entirely sure how competent the ceo at Neuralink is um although they seem to be making good progress so we assume that also Neuralink can manage itself but really this is a wake-up call for elon musk he needs to think about um how he can um hand over the reins to other people and, and perform more of a, an engineer kind of um founder kind of role at these these various companies that's what he, he needs to overview what people are doing rather than you know being the uh that setting the pace as it were um if you would ask me how how i think this is going to play out today so in november of 2022 um i'm fairly confident that this is how it will play out um so elon musk will spend the vast majority of his time in Q4 and then a large proportion of his time in Q1 rebuilding Twitter. It it, it it almost needs to start with a blank sheet of paper. That That's how bad things are. But I'm confident that he will ultimately do that. Whilst this is all going on, the Boeing company is still going to be pushing these projects uh, in Florida. Um, so you have Fort Lauderdale and also obviously you have Miami as well. 
um, and then you've got projects in, in Texas and you've got the main project, the, the Las Vegas Loop, which is the big, big project that they need to kind of start uh, next year. That hopefully will, will, will commence as well. Um, but I'm anticipating that all these projects make very, very good progress, whether that's on the drawing board or in the, the kind of permits and, and planning approvals stage, or whether that's actually starting construction, which will happen in Las Vegas. Um, so that will happen while, while Elon is, is essentially distracted, fixing Twitter. Uh, he'll be then begin refocusing on Tesla and SpaceX in Q2. So there'll, there'll be a massive proportion of his time that he then shifts back to Tesla and SpaceX. Um, again, whilst all this is, is ongoing, he's not going to be spending much time with the Boeing company, but Steve Davis will be holding the fort. Um, I anticipate at this point that we will have planning approvals for for maybe two maybe possibly three projects uh, to to get to get going um, in Florida and Texas uh, and maybe one additional one in Nevada as well uh, on top of the the main one um, his attention will then return back to the Boeing company in New York Q3 so we'll we're looking at potentially um, around nine months before we get back to how how it was to a certain extent obviously he's going to be given a bit more time to twitter but he will pull that time out of spacex and tesla so but very he will still be spending the same amount of time at the boeing company Neuralink uh next year as he was at the start of this year that's my personal um opinion on that um construction of the las vegas loop will hopefully commence at this stage so then there might be um, a more, um, a larger increase in his time that's proportioned to the Boeing company. Um, but again, you, you, it, it, it's more of kind of promoting the project than, than actually leading the, the engineering as it were. He, he wants to stay in the loop and, and be informed of what's happening because obviously it is his money, it is his investment. But in terms of actual uh, designs and, and strategies and things like that, uh, a lot of that's going to be left to uh, to Steve Davis. At this point, Twitter, I imagine, is going to be hiring a very progressive CEO. So someone who's um, got the right kind of um, attitude and, and the right kind of drive and vision for for Twitter that he can take over and, and run the ball. Now, I'd hope at the same point as this, although I doubt it, he would consider doing something with Tesla in the same kind of um, uh, manner, but maybe beginning of 2025. Um, what, what I would like to see from Elon is less day-to-day -day work in these companies and more of an oversight and more of a kind of a, a visionary uh, pushing various new ideas. A lot of the projects that SpaceX and Tesla are working on, they've already got through the hard bit, which is working out how you're going to manufacture it and working out how you're going to, um, how you're going to build it and, and what the design is and, and what kind of market segments you're going to go in so semi truck cyber truck and also uh, spacex you, you know uh, satellites are coming on well and, and starships coming on well the, the, all those projects are there and they're already going in the right direction you just have to start from scratch so again you know there's already a ceo at spacex uh just give her a bit more to do and then hopefully hopefully at this point uh, Elon can start to dedicate maybe 15 to 20 percent of his time to the Boeing company and again another 15 to 20 percent to Neuralink because hopefully those concepts will have come far enough that Elon Musk can then get in and do his kind of founder role uh, and push the engineering in, in those companies whereas he will leave the other three companies so Twitter, SpaceX, Tesla to kind of do their own thing. And, and really, they just need to focus on the fundamentals at, at, at that point, those companies, because um, if you if you are putting thousands of tons into um, lower for orbit, and you're also selling, you know, five million cars a year uh, and dominating in that, you, 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 really, the hard work's been done. You know, you just need to do what you've already done 
just on a bigger scale at that point. Um, well, I also believe that Twitter will be re relisted because it already has been listed. So an IPO on the NASDAQ, I I'd hope at some point as well the Boeing company would, would do the same. I don't know if that'll come before this or slightly after. It's very hard to predict what's going to happen in the very, very long term. Um, but those are my kind of thoughts on the thing. What I would say to everyone watching today, if you've come to this stage, um, don't worry about the Boeing company. It can manage itself. It's self-sufficient. It's got plenty of money to keep going. Uh, they've got the right ideas there. Uh, progress seems to be good on the various projects they're doing in terms of both planning, design and construction. Um, and Proofwork's coming on well and everything seems to be going very well with the Boeing company and it will manage itself. Um, and, and Elon can you know, leave it be, leave it to thrive with Steve Davis over the next nine months. And then when he comes back, things will be even better than he, he thought they could possibly be. And hopefully that will encourage him to get a bit more involved. And the same goes for Neuralink. Okay, so what I would say to that, don't worry. Uh, get on Twitter. Tell me what you think about this episode. <laughs> tell me what you think about uh, some of my predictions. Am I correct? Why am I not correct? Um, put it in the comments below. Um, as always, thanks for tuning in. You know what to do. Um, if you don't already know, I am on Twitter and I have been on for a while. And I have a blue check mark. You know what that means? I am the official Boring Revolution on Twitter. The only thing I would change is I want to change my handle from Boring Proof Rock to Boring Revolution, but I don't have enough characters. So will someone please tell Elon Musk that I need more characters in my username so I can make everything match up. Um, but yeah, please consider supporting me on these various platforms. Thank you, as always, to my amazing Patreons. I've not been good to you recently. I I'm not going to lie. I'm really sorry. Um, life has got in the way of things. Um, I've had some issues with family and things like that, and it's you know it's not their fault. They need my support, um, and I've had to you know essentially take time away from the YouTube channel. But I am recommitting myself. I have big visions for this channel, and I will be um, investing more time over the next sort of couple of months. Hopefully, well, maybe after Christmas, then we'll get into it. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you on the next one. And remember, guys, don't be boring. And remember, Elon is the chap. Perfect. Excellent. And with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Hail to the king, baby.